am Jonathan Larson. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Fine. I have to leave about three o'clock, so I, I must try to make a short intervention. And it would be fun, very interesting to get into the discussion about functional money and whether you could finance a basic income with at least partly with it. But what I'm going to speak about is how if economic democracy could be <coughs> enhanced by, by basic income. In the Scan Nordic countries, we already have what is called a political democracy, and we have also social democracy, and what is lacking is economic democracy. The last effort to achieve economic democracy was the wage earners fund by, uh, proposed by Rudolf Meiner and partly uh, was implemented in the 80s. But since then, uh, economic democracy in uh, Nordic countries has actually declined. <clears throat> what I mean by economic democracy is that you have commons that are administrated it, it, uh, democratically. And, and these types of, different types of commons are actually increasing quite a lot. It's not only the welfare state, it is, uh, of course, the, the nature, it is uh, knowledge, it's, it's the state, it's uh, the money also, it's a common, and it's law and so on. <clears throat> and from these commons which should be administrated democratically rather than capitalistically. From there, is, uh, the, the rewards from this should then be distributed in a fair way. And it's the most fair way you can do it actually is through a basic income. And a basic income then would, in a sense, strengthen uh, democracy in several ways economically. It would strengthen labor vis-a-vis -vis capital or the employer. It would help small-scale production uh, and local co cooperatives. And uh, you could also probably use it as they now are, have been doing in South Korea for uh, some kind of local currency where you, which you can use in a local in the locality and the local shops. <clears throat> uh, very important is that the basic income would probably change our consumer behavior and uh, it would favor a mentality where it's not so important to be a, <laughs> a conspicuous consumer but to uh, have activities which are interesting for yourself and at the same time for others. <clears throat> and it's important when we discussed the basic income, of course, that it, it, it could, it should not be introduced in a way that could legitimize uh, neoliberal policies. You, you could, there are many now suggestions that you ha would have a kind of basic income, but that uh, at the same time you would reduce the basic services and maybe the social insurance. And, uh, and in a way, it could be a legitimation of, of, of the new liberal capitalism. It's, it would be, be its last uh, uh, straw that it could use. But what, what if, we, if we discuss politically the thing, then I think that we can preserve the services and the social uh, insurance and introduce uh, to the beginning a kind of social dividend, a low 
basic income. And it could be uh, complemented with a participation income uh, for those uh, who are not employed in, in the capitalist or state sector, but uh, are doing work which is is considered to be good for society at large. So, uh, it, my, my proposal actually is to, to start with the social dividend part. It could be uh, financed also with uh, functional money, debt-free money, and, and its participation income. It, it, it is a thing that I have been trying to promote since uh, the 80s, where I used the Swedish terms medborgar inkomst for, for this uh, basic income part and medborgar loan for the participation part. Thank you. Thank you, Jan of Top. That was a fast and clear presentation.